Ah, uh, not much, man. <laughs> Is right. this in the background? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's like... a dog's asshole. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah, that's my French bulldog. Yeah. So he's been a he's been a part of uh, most of the podcasts and uh, many online training sessions and uh, many sales calls. I was joking earlier. It's like my my fake pair of tents right there. As soon as my dog jumps on the sales call, it's like line sinker. I just can't. Say, hey, what are you doing? Up. What are you doing? <laughs> He's probably one of the All first right. Frenchies I've seen with balls still. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, that was the thing, right? So, like, um, from what I was told from the breeder, it's actually best to not neuter them for the first couple of years because uh, then they'll actually fully develop. He's quite the, uh, he's quite the stocky one, so most French yeah. bulls are actually undersized, which is why they, um, they get a lot of health issues. So, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so he's still not neutered. He's four. I'm a little late on that take. But then I was considering, <laughs> like, breeding them because, again, if you're in Vancouver – it's oh, just man. like you're not you're not official Vancouver Yale Townite to like you have a French bulldog. It's like it's like the you know status Chanel purse shitty BMW and the French bulldog. So I was thinking about breeding them, uh, but then I looked into the you cost and time and, and that sort of stuff. But yeah, that's, that's Fifi. Had a litter. Yep. Um, a French bulldog. They had two, and then the second one they got nougat. They ended up going back to the the person they bought it off, and they breeded her with their their litter. Oh, okay. Uh, they got a. They got. A, I think about six, six beautiful French bulldog puppies, and oh, that's sweet. for about five, six thousand dollars US each, I think. Oh wow, yeah. crazy, it's ridiculous. Yeah, because I don't know something about the breed and where they came from and how much they were. That's like the price they had to sell them at. According oh, to okay. The what if it was a blue uh, French bulldog? I know they're the ones that, that they were like. Though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Those yeah. command like a yeah. lot. He's just like a crazy fawn. I got. I actually only paid like twenty two for him. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. But then, yeah, like first, fucking first, like three days I had him, he gets into the garbage and then like, it's my first dog. So I'm like freaking out like, oh no, he starts shitting blood. So then Ooh, like, I know. yeah, so I got to take him to the vet. The vet was in kits uh, on the West side. And then like the guy, I'm pretty sure the vet could just like see, like smell blood in the water. He's just like, yeah. oh, this guy's super worried. So he just comes yeah. back with like the diagnosis. Like, oh, he needs every test. So it was like $900 later. You know? it was. Yeah, he was fine. I'm like, all right. So technically, he was like about three grand. Oh, that's not too bad. I mean, did you end up having any of the surgery on his nose or anything, or did you just leave it as is? No, yeah, I left it as is. So yeah, he's good. Um, he had a lot of breathing problems before from like the heat. I thought I probably just wasn't taking him out enough. Um, I literally have to probably take him out for like a two-hour walk. Wow, he's, he yeah, he, he's good. Yeah, he breathes okay, and he's still just like a le regular standard snorty, snorty French. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is his anxiety. So he uh, he does the lot, but I started pumping him full of CBD. So that seems to be helping. oh good. <laughs> oh, that that stuff's work. I think that stuff works better for animals than it does for humans. Sometimes, hey, like I've seen some real good like uh, before and after stories. That's what I was doing in Colorado. Uh, yeah. Twelve months, the previous twelve months before we came here, is just working with a friend, and he had a whole heap of different brands that use CBD, and he did a lot of CBD supply. So I had the opportunity of meeting like some of the biggest companies there is out there, like one of um. Joe Rogan's companies. He has an I interest in. I'm um, sure. Do you want to grab him? Um, we're, we're not recording it, are we? <laughs> yeah, you no. know, I think we're just re we're recording. So, okay, welcome oh, to Tune Into Turn Fit, everybody. Uh, <laughs> episode eight. We again, we're just knee deep into this. Uh, so yeah, thanks for tuning in, watching once again. Um, hit the subscribe button down here, or if you're on uh, Spotify. Uh, the follow button uh, this week we have uh, two excellent guests um, Joe and Emma uh, owner operators of movement foods which is a meal prep food delivery service um, in located in Vancouver British Columbia Canada uh, I've known them for quite some time uh, two of the best people I've met two of the first people I've met when I moved in uh, moved to Vancouver officially uh, and then um, Dave brought me in coincidence they are working um, on foods. Joe and Emma are here. So yeah, if you want to give the audience a quick intro, it'd be great. So I'm Joe. This is Emma. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're the owners of Movement Food. Um, we started the company like three years ago. Mm -hmm. was it? Yeah. Oh, a bit, maybe a bit longer. Yeah. Um, we just came here on a work visa and, you know, uh, saw an opportunity, saw a gap in the market. The Australian fitness industry is quite uh, further ahead than what Canada was back then. So uh, yeah, there, I think there was at the time there was only like two other meal prep companies. Yep. Um, so yeah, so we started the company and uh, we got some really good uh, results and traction with it. And yeah, it's kind of just 
it, it was like our first uh, step into entrepreneur life. <laughs> mm. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. And when, we, when we started the business, we were on a two year work visa. So we had no other choice but to start the business with the mindset that, hey, we've only got two years to be around the business and then we've got to leave. So from the very first day, we um, went into it with the uh, goal of hiring someone that could look after the business while we weren't there. And we managed to get that all set up in 12 months. Um, and from there, it allowed us as own operators to sort of step back and focus a lot more on our customers' experience and the marketing and really just scaling the business from there. Nice. Yeah, it's been a fun little journey. Yeah. Lots of learning. Yeah, yeah, I, bet. Lots yeah of learning. I remember. Yeah, I remember meeting you too. I think when I first moved here, maybe like around the same time. Mm. I think. Mm -hmm. kind of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah Steve Nash, which is like, yeah. which is bankrupt. You know, so oh, yeah, yeah. No, it, yeah. it doesn't exist yeah, anymore. Yeah. Well, That's apparently sad. they still exist in the sense of taking people's money because I know they're still charging. They're still really? charging members. Yeah, they still charge fees. Oh my goodness. Month. Yeah. I wonder what's just... going to happen to those gyms because they have some really great gyms around it, the area. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so yeah, for anyone who's listening who hasn't been to, to Vancouver, um, you know, they're, they're pretty much this look, Steve Nash gym. It's probably all over the news. Everyone knows the basketball player, but uh, he branded his name with like a, a chain that was, that was local or provincial. And, uh, you know, they had a really good grip with respect to um, locations and some of the nicest facilities for sure. But just, just, I can't, I used to work for them, so I can't really say anything further. But with that being said, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so there, I know from what I understand from the bankruptcy perspective, I know they're selling off the portfolio, so there's going to be someone stepping in to take Oh, over. the whole thing. Yeah, so. Oh, that's awesome. I so think, I, I, well, I know, like, they were trying, they were taking, they were um, having people in and touring them last year. The, the, the wheel is already in motion uh, from what I understand. So someone's going to step in. Um, I don't know if it's going to be like an Equinox or a good life, or I, I just know like the whole landscape of the fitness scene is changing too with like, you know, Gold's Gym bankrupting their, their actual corporate facilities. And uh, really? oh, that happened too. Yeah. So like their franchise is still mostly, operating yeah. too. So, um, you know, I don't know what kind of big players would be able to step in and take over some of those clubs. Some of the big, like the sports club is one of the nicest clubs you'll, You'll, mm -hmm. you'll see like yeah. 50,000 square feet, like open, like, you know, triple of everything. All, all yeah. techno gym, like the best of the best equipment. The one that yeah. we went out to at Port Coquitlam was great. Yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah, it's just too bad. There's like their, uh, some of their practices weren't, weren't the best. So, um, but yeah. yeah, so it's very interesting to see. So I know the landscape of what we're doing is just going to be changing so rapidly. Like I know with TurnFit and with us, you know, we're, we've adapted to like the online market too, mm. you know, and uh, as you know, like we, we've been doing that for quite some time. Uh, but then, you know, like when this happened, we're just like, oh, yay, you know, we're, we're going to get mm. the online thing. But then like every gym moves into the space. Yeah. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. Fuck. You know, they got their pockets are super, super deep. But for us going back and, um, you know, gyms allowing to reopen, um, you know, we'll see what the landscape's going to look like here for us with like a major mm. player basically like shipwrecking or abandoning and like I think a hundred thousand plus members. And if you're operating a facility, how they likely, you know, you have 10% of that business being personal training clients. So maybe mm. 10,000 clients that may be flooding, looking for options too. Right. So yeah. Have you guys want... got a plan to um, reopen or slowly like have less members or something like that? Uh, for like personal yeah. training for. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're gonna be uh, we're starting back up tomorrow. So we have our two locations. We have the oh, okay. um, we're we're at Kitsilano Rep One, but we're gonna be in a, a different facility for right now. It's decided to uh, to open up right away, and then uh, we have our Fairmont location, which is gonna be open June first. Isn't that right, Dave? Yeah, yeah. So oh, we're yeah. in a lucky position where the private studios um, that we're at will actually get to book. Um, but I think lots of gyms will be moving to the same model where it won't be an all access membership anymore. I think it will be like certain times that you have to pre-book yeah. like yeah. for future things of gyms. Yeah, um, I, wonder, I wonder if you could set up a good little ad set through Facebook marketing for any followers of Steve Nash and just target those <laughs> people directly for personal training. You'd probably get a lot higher conversion rate at the moment because everyone's looking for that opportunity to exercise. So it might be a good way to hit the, hit the ground running tomorrow and run some, you know, maybe just put a couple hundred dollars towards a few ad sets and see how many bookings you can get out of it. I can help you with yeah, that tomorrow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there yeah, you go. sure. I'll, I'll take you up on that. See, there's Joe. Yeah. He's always working. Yeah, well, yeah, he we, never we were, stops. We were, yeah, we were discussing. <laughs> it. Yeah, what are you two doing? So, from what I understand, like I know, like you and I first met. Like I know you were bodybuilding. You were training at Nash, and then I still follow you guys as personal accounts uh, and the Movement Foods accounts. And I always see you guys at Lions 
MMA, yeah. which um, I yeah. actually started like that was the whole thing I know since I've been locked up. I started kickboxing too, or at least trying to. So I got my oh, little yeah. like wrecking ball punching bag <laughs> right there. <laughs> so, nice. yeah. My okay. landlords are probably gonna hate me, but yeah. So what, like, is like, are you back in the studio? You guys, like, I know you guys have been training in the yeah. living room. Like, what's going we've on? Got, we've, we got some mats at home. Um, from yeah. I don't know if you can we've see got, them. I got a dummy there for jujitsu. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, nice. And, We've got a There's like hippo mats and then the, the mats. There's mats underneath the rug. Um, and so we've been like training there and then doing some of the live classes. Um, but yeah, we, we mostly train um, Muay together. Thai and yeah. yeah, but together, but Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu now over weight training. Like we'll probably train weights twice a week ish, mm. maybe sometimes once. <laughs> Not enough, unfortunately. I've, yeah. I've probably put on about 10, 15 pounds in this quarantine. See, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah so yeah, so everyone, yeah, everyone who's listening to like, you know, and I was an avid weight trainer, you know, like I was, I was yeah. actually trying to encourage Dave to like get into like some sort of boxing. I'm like, Dave, come box. Like, I don't know. I'm like, uh, come, like, I'm not the best, but just like, I, I think I discussed this on episode, I think it was six or seven uh, for everyone who's listening, you know, sift through one of them, <laughs> try final. But yeah, so like one of the most important things is to switch over to like something different that you haven't done before yeah. and you get a lot more adaptation. So for everyone who's listening, it was you know, been going to the gym. That's why I wanted to ask you some of these questions. What have you been doing? How have you been adapting? Yeah. So that's crazy. How did you put on the, um, the 15? Well, the, the weight itself probably comes from the style of training I was doing prior to the quarantine. Like I was hitting about an hour of jiu-jitsu, half an hour of weights and an hour of kickboxing five, six days a week. It was super high intensity. Yeah. Like I was training really to compete. Intensity. So last year we, we had, I had about a year under my belt of kickboxing and I did two fights. And then from there, I thought, you know, there's a lot more to improve. So we did another about half a year. And then I got into jiu-jitsu late last year. And I was, was, I was supposed to compete uh, two to three times uh, around now. So May, June, July in jiu-jitsu tournaments. And I was going to try to get an MMA fight later in the year. Um, and then trying to just train for all of those things. You end up training two, three hours sometimes every yeah. day. Then going from that to like, just being stuck in the apartment and barely even walking yeah. like 20 steps a day. <laughs> yeah. so I, was eating, I was eating about 4,000 calories a day then. Um, and I've still continued to eat 4,000 calories and my expenditure has gone to nothing, basically. <laughs> 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 Rolling around on the mat with a dummy or doing a live class and just practicing yeah. technique. We but, did run a couple of times. Like we tried yeah. to run the seawall sometimes, but I don't know. But it's given us an opportunity to focus more on business and like yeah. learning and we pick up picked up some old hobbies and yeah that's cool we've enjoyed the quarantine we've made the most of it like the weight will come off in two weeks you know we've got four weeks until summer now we're going to kick off a big push with all our customers and as many people can get involved as possible to just do like a big four-week push into summer you know everything's opening back up this week and i feel like it's a good time for people to set some goals you know like mm. there's a, the lights at the end of the tunnel now um and i feel like this week is going to be a, a big pivoting moment for a lot of uh, businesses in our space yeah are you are you too are you like ready for it i, I that was me and dave yeah. were talking too like dave we're, we're pretty geared up are we ready for this yeah we're ready we're yeah. excited yeah, I think it's yeah. pretty busy yeah. too so like i share that sentiment are you like so with um let's say are you going back to lions so i think a question like a lot of people may have and we're running into that too where a lot of clients are still wanting to stay indoors and it may have been like something that may have been far-fetched or not want like they may have not wanted to do that before like everyone was just very attached to the gym mm. Uh, yeah. Like, even myself, I was like, before this. I was training for a competition, so I was very much six days, Hell yeah. three hours a day. And now I'm like, I'm like, I maybe need weights like twice. Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna jump yeah. right back in the jump right back in lions or yeah. Yeah. No, we kind of we, yeah. we sponsor one of the guys there that um, runs the place, um, and he said that they're setting it up so that there's not going to be any pad work or any sparring or any jujitsu for the first uh, like. I think at least the first month. Yes, they're gonna, have, like, they're gonna have stations. Um, so this week they've opened up to doing personal training sessions. And then I think next week they're aiming to have like, they'll have three uh, lines of people where they'll have some bag work. Then they'll have like people doing shadow boxing, getting uh, like their technique critiques and stuff like that. Mm. So it's all gonna be solo work. So it'll be different, but I think it'll actually be a little bit more intense because you're not gonna have to have a partner to push you. You're gonna have to just go as hard as you can on the bag, which might actually be, for someone like Joe, yeah. he can't go 100% on pads with someone like me. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. So I think it might actually even be harder for everyone, which is going to be good coming out of quarantine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's going to be interesting to see like the landscape of things when we get out of it. I, know, I don't know if you guys got that clip of uh, oxygen yoga, um, how they had like the plexiglass. 
Oh no. no! Yeah, no. so like, so there was an article saying like, like there was like the toilet paper scale and said now plexiglass invest in like stock in plexiglass because yeah. every Brit business is gonna need oh, yeah. it. Yeah. So, but there was this one shot of this yoga studio. I think it was on East Hastings, uh, one of the franchise owners, and then she had uh, a full room set up, and there was a yoga mat. And on each side of the yoga mat, there was a, a, a freestanding plexiglass. Wow. wow. Yeah, Dave, did you see that? I didn't see that, no. but that's a smart idea. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. I've heard a lot about it, and I've seen advert. I've actually received emails for it for Movement Food, but I mean, we don't really need it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Can we just get like a shield, like a like a fucking riot shield? Yeah, like, 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 like the one you have in Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah, like I got a training <laughs> session with Dave. Yesterday. Yeah, right. Or like the police masks. Yeah, that's yeah. Super, well, yeah, super interesting to see what's going to happen. Like, I'm a member of Equinox, and you know, I don't know what's going to happen there because they had like three, four thousand people. I know some of the group classes are going to be calling for like only 12 to 18 people but then yeah. like as a trainer and as a trainer like you know if you're a personal trainer working a commercial gym like what's going to happen with your career because like you only have a job if you're with another person right mm. so you're going to add like 70 people to like a training space but then you're, is it your members more important or are you like your clients more important so yeah have they sent you like any emails or anything letting you know what they're going to be doing or no no well there was an update i think last week and they were talking about opening up sometime shortly but again they're they have like a hundred something clubs so i don't know i guess what the state or province or country specifications are again like we're pretty fortunate here we're like i was planning a trip and i was telling talking to dave about planning a trip and i'm like maybe like i guess we got to keep in canada and like i think beat like a quebec had like 700 cases we've only had like <laughs> 15 terrible. on a daily basis so like yeah. Yeah, yeah so i don't know what equinox is gonna do our numbers are super low where they're a new york company and holy fuck they have like three hundred and sixty thousand. so yeah. yeah i don't know the gym scene will be way different the gym will be unpredictable i don't know once they the gym's open that but i honestly don't know they'll have to change their model because most of them were barely surviving before right so yeah it'll be re <laughs> really interesting to see what happens because like for example equinox is awesome at classes and people always love their classes and they're full full so what happens when you had a room of 30 40 and you can have 10 yeah. Yeah. What have they done in the virtual reality space for personal training so far? Do you know, like, what's going on there? Because it's yeah, definitely something. It's been mainly like I know for a large part, everyone flocks to Zoom. I know there's this one, um, a few different softwares. One called Lift, I think, in particular, that I think Equinox uses, uh, and some of the big fancier gyms use, where you actually have like the Tabata clock and everyone's there you can interact or whatnot so i think that's been the biggest thing and then and then just every trainer's got a bloody app now, yeah i can't even like open a, something up without getting queasy from all the crap i'm just seeing it's just everyone so all the I don't know, I, I think that, honestly i think the biggest thing has just been zoom calls but mainly youtube everyone dave you and i talked to like i don't know dave you probably have more insight on this like i think youtube's been the biggest one yeah most people have been just doing like free youtube classes like just searching and stuff like that um for the class people to. but yeah exactly mm. so almost everybody's just searching whatever they want like hit workouts full body workouts and using youtube so we've been taking advantage of that and just building out our youtube audience um the in-person stuff is really similar because as long as you know how to cue people up if you have a video like this yeah um it's actually quite easy and our lots of our clients are actually loving it and might probably stay with online and some will want in person it's mm. usually they gravitate to one or the other but lots of people are liking that it doesn't take any time to get anywhere you're just like okay instantly let's do the workout yeah. and really a good trainer can cue you up like no problem so yeah i'm mm. sorry if you can hear snoring in the background it's not it's the dog and there's also someone <laughs> hammering upstairs or something <laughs> nice That's funny. just passed right out <laughs> yeah yeah i think the mm -hmm. toughest thing with the online is like the online's good but it, it just coincided with like lack of equipment yeah. You know, so you have to get really, really creative and and uh, and utilize someone's space too. So, but yeah, I think yeah, most trainers. I just squats with Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I did. I did. It was. That was actually really fun. I had sore legs, but like seriously, it was a good workout. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Question I have for you too. So, like, from what I observe, you you two did a lot of traveling, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was one thing I admire you guys working and traveling. So, like, how yeah. do you feel about that now? Like, is there, is there like you know, so anyone listening, these two like would work and travel is kind of part of my dream, be able to like put myself in a situation that way. I think that's a lot of people's dreams. I but yeah, so, like, what were, you, what, what were you doing before? What's different now? Are you like itching to get away? Like, where's the first place going to go? I'm sure, a lot of people listening would, I mean, that's the one thing I see is just like, there's, and there's countries opening up, like Greece is opening up, and yeah. Yeah. Mexico's opening up. And I'm like, well, like, yeah. 
I'm almost they, scared to go because the U.S. Yeah. is gonna be guns a blazing to the first ones there. <laughs> they're like the stick, they're the most like content, like uh, affected people. Yeah. So, yeah. But, um, yeah has, has there been like a trade off? What have you guys been doing? To... We did, we traveled for the last five years. We've traveled and worked remotely. Um, yeah. Um, and then before that, we both had like pretty good jobs in Australia. Uh, just I was in finance, and Joe was in like he works for Techno Gym actually. Um, oh, nice! I met the he, owner yeah. actually a while ago. Yeah. He was an eagle. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So we just kind of, we got to a point in our life where we were like, mm, do we want to have kids or do we want to travel? And then we decided to travel and it just opens up your mind so much. Like traveling, it, honestly, if we never traveled, I don't know that we would have ever like taken that step outside of our comfort zone and started our own business, you know? We wouldn't have. No, probably not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me too. We have two kids by now. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think you two made the right now, choice. <laughs> we did. We did. We're really happy. We've got. We've been having the opportunity to live in like Asia, all over America, Mexico, Mexico. We Europe, lived in Barcelona for a bit. We lived yeah. in Portugal, with Taiwan Europe. for about six months, Mexico for about a year and a half. Yeah, we spent a lot of time in the UK as well. We've lived in Canada on and off like every summer, basically. Yeah, so that's when we we come back here for like June, July, August normally. Um, the plan was to do the six months here this time. We drove up from Colorado, so we did a road trip all the way up here and we got across the border the day before they shut it. Wow. Yeah. It was actually like, I think we got here on March 1st and then it was like a couple days later, everything just went locked down yeah. crazy. <laughs> we were, um, and when this all happened, we tried to book homes in, book, uh, book tickets home in June, but then they canceled them. Like within 24 hours, the tickets were canceled and we're still waiting for a refund from Air Canada. Um, but we're going to, we're going to stay here until August and then just fly straight home. So we're, we're pretty much done with our travel now. Um, we're going to take a break, settle down for a couple of years, get set up, have some kids. Um, oh, nice. Maybe start some businesses go. in Australia yeah. because <laughs> like, as much as we love the business here, it is very difficult being a non-resident. Yeah. yeah. It makes but, things very difficult. Just like anything, anything you're trying to do, even sometimes for trying to work with a, a supplier, if they're a bigger supplier, they want to have like credit history checks and all this stuff. Yeah. So. I would love to stay. Like we went through the initial steps with the lawyers to figure out how we could uh, immigrate here and get get a proper visa going, but it's just not an option for us. You know, Emma and I went straight into the workforce after school and didn't get any continued education besides like you know personal training certificates and you know, just diplomas here and there. And that's just that means nothing to the to the Canadian government. It really doesn't. So, that's no, it's crazy I'm, that you have, can have a successful business and then that doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, for us yeah. to even take the steps towards getting um, a, a proper visa or residency, Emma would have, one of us would have to go back to work for 12 months. Um, for another Canadian For company. another Canadian company. And we'd have to prove to them that our position with that company was essential. So it's just... Or the, there was another option. We could invest $200,000 into Movement Food. Or another business. But we like Movement Food doesn't need that money, really. And... Like also, we don't just have that money sitting around. <laughs> yeah, like, oh yeah, here you go. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, you want to go tens bank. or twenties, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we d we decided we're just gonna set ourselves up. We're not gonna go back to Sydney, so that's where we're from originally. Nice. We're gonna go to Palm Beach. It's between um uh, between the Gold Coast and Sydney. Um, it's on the beach. Yeah, it's, it's really on the beautiful beach. There, beautiful so, area. Yeah. There's a really cool kickboxing gym there. There's a guy named John Wayne Parr. <laughs> He's yeah, like right. one of the, he's one of the most famous Australian kickboxers to ever come out of Australia and the world for that matter. So it'd be cool to go and train with him. And he's got a whole heap of fighters that have just been signed with one Super Series, which is a big fighting uh, federation like the UFC. Yeah, nice. So I wouldn't say fun. that our travel is over though, because I know like <laughs> just in this quarantine, we've both been like, oh, we really miss Europe, and oh, we really miss Mexico. So it's definitely not over. We'll go back to Australia, and then I think once. I, I don't. I don't think that travel's going to be the same for a long time. Yeah, like they, yeah that's the thing, right? You're going to need a. You're going to need a vaccine. They're going <sighs> to be checking your temperature. You're going to have to get there like five hours before your flight. So I think we'll just like stay in one place until it's you know a little bit less crazy. <laughs> yeah, a couple of years. I want to get some motorbikes. So I want to. <laughs> want to go to Australia. Yeah, we were just talking about that. You need a Harley. Yeah. Down. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's been like five years without any bikes, and it's just it hurts my heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's crazy to see some of the protocols. Like, I don't know if they're prototypes. I know, like, China's got that like box, that machine you walk into, mm -hmm. and they yeah. just like scan you. I've seen some designs where like they had like two, like the the two seats here, and then the one in the middle is like the pointed the other way, or they just like take the the middle seat out and put like plexiglass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on there. I feel 
I feel like visas will end up going digital and then there'll be prerequisites to, to yeah. enter certain countries. Like you'll have to show a certain amount of, um, you know, whether it be vaccines or yep. health lifestyle choices to be able to enter certain countries because yeah. once they move a passport digital, like the information, the tracking, everything they can do with it to, to police you is going to be so much more efficient. Yeah. Yeah. We're so I think lucky. it'll speed things we're up and so make it lucky better. That we've yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, we've got no privacy now anyway, so the more technology... Yeah, we really that, don't. No, we don't. As soon as you sign into Google on your phone, you've given away everything. Like, I think Google's been tracking my location now for about six or seven years. Yeah, it's crazy. It tells us how many countries we've been to, how many cities we've been to. It's pretty... It's actually... I love it. It's so interesting, but I'm like, that's also crazy. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, it's good if you ever get, like, in any situation where you need to prove where you've been to. Google tracks you, like, every second if you've got your phone with you these days. You have a digital, the digital cookie crumbs. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But yeah, I think we're just, we're super grateful that we, we were able to travel so freely the last five years. We just would go like, oh, we're going to go here now. We're going to go there. But it's definitely not like that it anymore. It will be the same. <laughs> It won't be the yeah. same. No, I think that's the, I, I know from a lot of people I talk to, that's the biggest thing that I think they've been planning or missing. And I just, I just like hate to break it to them. Like we're not going anywhere like anytime mm. soon. Like the yeah. girl I'm seeing, we, she keeps talking about like wanting to go on a trip. But I'm like, you want Kelowna or Whistler? I think that's yeah. pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the last two weeks. We just did Kelowna and Whistler in two weeks. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. I think that's about it. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, a question I have for you too. So like, I think one of the biggest things we were talking about this, Dave and I earlier about mental health and, and uh, you know, companionship, that sort of stuff too. So something interesting about you too is that you, you're both together, you live together, um, you know, you get exercise together and then also work together too. So has there been- How have obstacles? we not killed each other? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you fucking said it. You fucking, yeah. Yeah, so like, cause I know a lot of like, I think what was it like when this first happened, the, the divorce rate in China went up like 40%. I'm just throwing out that number. Oh, yeah. So like, I yeah, know exactly. I, a, a lot of people yeah. I talk to just like they're, they're getting like different negative attitudes to people who are close mm. to them. And I don't know if it's from being sheltered or whatnot, but like, yeah, what are some of the things you may have encountered you, that you're cool with sharing? Uh, what are some of the things you've done to manage some of those things too? Just having so many different components of um, your guys' life also be intertwined. So I think the audience would love to, I would love to hear that personally, but <laughs> <laughs> the secret sauce. Um, I think in the very beginning of when quarantine happened, we both kind of like, I think you were, we went through like the stages of grief, <laughs> you know, like at first it was like denial and then it was anger and then it was acceptance. And then when we finally, like initially we were getting on each other's nerves because Joe's very goal oriented. So like he had his jujitsu, like he mentioned earlier, he had his jujitsu goals and he wanted to do tournaments and he wanted to fight, but obviously not training with someone else or with guys his own size, he's not going to be able to reach those goals or even progress and get to closer to a blue belt because you need a professor, you know, to help you get there. So for him, I think he was super down about that. Um, and I didn't, I'm not really into jujitsu as much as him. So he was getting upset at me because I didn't want to train with him every single day. <laughs> Don't let me choke her. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then also like we had just gotten here. We'd only, we'd literally been here for a week and then everything closed. And we had all these big plans for the business. We were going to be, we had the car here as well. So our plan was to really push our wholesale accounts, try and get into more gyms and everything. But then they all closed. So we were both just really sad. And like, I think, both needed our own space but then once we kind of like came to terms with it and realized it is what it is like the I think what makes everybody the most anxious and stressed out is the uncertainty of not knowing what the future is going to, to hold and nobody can tell you no one can tell you how long it's going to last when things are going to go back to normal when you can do the things that you love um, so we kind of just came to an acceptance of it and realized okay we need to stop like drinking on a Wednesday <laughs> and um, you know, maybe we should start a routine. So then we just kind of set ourselves like, you know, daily goals, not, you know, not monthly or anything like that. And that kind of. By the time April rolled around, we'd had a good routine, you know, like we were yeah. training, we we're doing live classes. We started we're... doing yoga too. Yeah. Yoga. We would wake up in the morning and do yoga and meditation. And that really like helped set the tone for the day. Um, and then also just like really using the time because you don't have anything else right now, using the time to put it into business mm. and work and like hustling. And um, hobbies. Yeah. And then also picking up old hobbies that we used to do too. Yeah. So I started playing computer games. We bought some rollerblades. <laughs> like we, we Dave, going back to our childhood. The guy. Yeah. I've been the gamer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah I'm, I, me and Dave have spoken about this plenty of times. <laughs> 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 but yeah, 
yeah, then I think like once we started doing that, you kind of like you're and you're not so focusing on like the negatives, you're really just focusing on the positives and you're getting you're actually getting a lot out of each day. You're just generally happier. Mm. Which means you're happier in your relationship as well. So But we we you know we've been together we'll be married for almost ten years, right? Um Yep. And <laughs> together for over twelve, I think. So like we've we've had a plenty of time to figure out what annoys each other and then just <laughs> make sure we communicate properly. You know, we never let anything carry on. So, like, if we have a problem, we talk about it straight away and then get over it. And I think we were always in each other's space anyway. Like yeah. We already worked together. We've already traveled together quite a lot. So And spent it, most of the day together. Like, yeah. Us. And, like, if we need time apart, we'll just go do our own thing, you know, and yeah. just be open about it and it's fine. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I think it's like a true test, right? That's what I know. That's like, that's a litmus test for me if I can travel with someone. Yeah. That's what like, you know, like if that's established early on, if I feel like most things are just trickling down from that, like what you've established there, if you can travel with someone. Yeah. I think the yeah. hardest thing to do in a marriage is run a business together. That's for sure the hardest thing. Yeah. Because you, sometimes you can't treat, treat your wife like an employee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely cannot. <laughs> yeah, I can't even, I, I, have, I can't even like train the people I date because it'll be like dinner time and then it's like, oh, you made me do like 30 push-ups and pass salty fucking ass. Like, <laughs> you know, like that's why I just didn't even want to like go there. I don't know, Dave, do you have any like training rules like that? I know I just won't train anyone. Like my um, significant other, I just won't. Yeah, I know. I, I believe that would be the hardest thing. I think the hardest thing would be almost what you just mentioned, Emma, about working together because it's different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like when yeah. you're an employee, yeah. for, yeah. You like, do like, this. Oh, like, you're oh. married out of the work. And yeah. then when you're, when the work is done, like remember that you're married. <laughs> I have, I've definitely annoyed her enough that when we get to the gym and if we're sparring that night, I'll know I've annoyed her. She'll whack me pretty hard. Her, her game will be really good. Yeah, yeah I should just, she'll be vicious. I like Mark. I don't mind. I, I love he, it. He, he like, he'll tell me to go hard. You're like, okay, this is for yeah. all the last week. Yeah. yeah. This is for eating the rest of my chocolate. No. <laughs> yeah, I so think so. The question I have, so yeah, so like you mentioned when you guys came back, uh, and then like a week later in these lofty plans and um, for anyone who's listening. So they, yeah, they run a movement um, prep movement, or sorry, the, the food delivery, yeah, movement prep. foods, food, yeah. food prep, all that stuff. Um, and you know, a component of your business is having like approaching gyms and, and marketing mm -hmm. through them um, and then also online. So like, um, did you guys have to adapt like crazy? Like what was going on there? Were, was there a spike in sales? Like, there was actually, um, things ended up working out really well for us. You know, we were already, we'd arrived, we would planned to push hard hustle, you know, optimize our marketing, you know, uh, create a better experience for our customers. And we started doing that as soon as we got here in March. So by the time when things got pretty hairy, we'd already put enough into the business to start like trending in the right direction. So when this happened, we, we continued to grow throughout the start and now it's sort of just leveled off. Um, we do have some big plans for the business over the next couple months. You know, we're going to do a lot of um, campaigns around people getting back on track now. Like it's very easy for, to, well, I mean, I, I can probably guarantee you that 90% of people out there aren't doing what they were doing before they started the yeah. whole quarantine thing. So it'll be a good opportunity to try to light a fire under some people and get them, you know, on the right track to getting ready for summer. You know, we're four weeks away, and I'm I'm pretty sure that most people have at least ten pounds to lose. <laughs> oh, for sure, Dave. Me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know myself. I think like I was I was contest prepping. I think I was down to like one ninety nine, two hundred. But I always I always try to time stuff after. So mm. I think it worked out for me where I was starting to increase you know my caloric intake, and uh, usually I'll do some strength training. But since that was out the window, I had to adapt. And if you switch to something completely new or different, like usually your mm. body will triple all that stuff so i just went full on like boxing kickboxing i think i've only put on like five, five wow that's good. Oh, that's awesome yeah. that's nothing uh, maybe well, i don't know maybe my i don't know maybe my ass shrunk and then this still got bigger but on the scale like, <laughs> 207 booty exercises. I, I haven't weighed myself but i feel like it's at least 10 15 pounds and that's probably just because of the like you know i'm doing an hour and a half less of cal uh, calorie expenditure a day which is probably like 1500 calories but you're all so eating that but yes i'm still eating that actually my eating's gone i mean like eating's been good but it's just the snacks like we've had shit adds up time. like so bad i got yeah. three thousand calories in movement food and then another one to two thousand calories in snacks just random <laughs> snacks yeah they just, they just what's your me. what's your poison what's your what's your uh are you just like um, you like kettle chips? yeah it's the That's honey so mustard good. or the honey dijon kettle chips 
Mm -hmm. I'm an Oreos. I'm a, I'm a sucker for tortilla chips and guacamole. Like, I'm done. So oh, good. The whole bag. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. yeah, I've been inhaling like at least three bags of popcorn per week because I think that's like the alternative, like the nice choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just one thing at a that's time. Next thing you know, it's like my like week supply is gone by Wednesday. I'm like, fuck, man. Can't yeah. Back to the store. Well, yeah, have so you, you um, trained uh, like boxing or kickboxing before? No, it was the first time. I always, I always wanted to for the longest time. And then, you know, coming from Winnipeg, that's where Dave's from. It wasn't really like things were really spread out and not as accessible. And then not to make excuses, I know for the like big chunk early on in my career of training, it was always like, I was always 6 a.m. to like 8 p.m. So it was really, mm -hmm. there wasn't really afternoon options or for me to like go to the closest gym and come back to work. It was probably yeah. usually like an hour and a half commute. Things weren't really as accessible as mm -hmm. they were. And then you guys probably know like this, most, most kickboxing gyms will have like 6 a.m. and 8 p.m. or after work classes, wasn't too many spots during the day. So um, yeah. I was actually training with one of our guys, Marlo. Um, mm -hmm. but then yeah. we brought on that actually is from Lions. Uh, I can't remember oh, cool. the guys oh, nice. he learned from or whatever, but he competed too. He's been doing kickboxing for like seven years. So yeah. oh, it was probably me then. <laughs> yeah. I can't remember what's, yeah. what's like one of the coaches there, Matt, I think. Or uh, there's, there's a me and oh, there's Polly. There, Mikey, there Mikey, yeah. He's a BJJ coach there, right? Uh, Maybe it's a, a me. Yeah. I think he was training under him. Yeah. 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 So, like, me, yeah. 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 He's yeah awesome. so I, started, I did like a month kickboxing with him before we got all locked up. And now I'm just watching like, crappy youtube videos yeah. <laughs> it's clearly not the same or whatnot but there's some good live classes like boss rootin he's pretty oh, a, i forgot about mikey that does yeah there's, there's well. two there's mikey's, two mikey's there. yeah um but you know there's, there's this down of... boss's classes yeah it's b-a-s rootin boss yeah, oh no i, think... I know yeah I'm like, no i just oh, like i just love hearing him talk number one <laughs> like, oh, you know, i was he's... a huge pride fighting fan so it's just like, yeah. uh, this is like he cracks me voice up is just, yeah we did one of his classes like a week ago. It was a live class, and I was I, I stopped and said to Joe, "I'm like, I have no idea what we're doing because I can't understand what he's saying." <laughs> <laughs> we've had um we've had the opportunity to train with one of his students who started up his own curriculum. He's pretty famous. He he went through he trained on the bus and then went all the way to the UFC and didn't really make it past the UFC or through the UFC. But um we had an opportunity to train with him for a year and then as soon as we started doing Bus Rutan's life classes, like everything you could see that he'd taught his student, that his student had taught us, had um, like, there's a lot of similar similarities, um, just in the way, because he's one of the only kickboxing teachers that has a, a pretty good system. Um, so all the combos have numbers, um, any combo that's worked well for like any famous person, he names after them. Mm. Well, that's cool. It does work really well. Yeah. Like the system yeah. is great. Like when Joe and I are just training together, instead of, like saying six strikes, you might just say like, you know, the name of a combo and it's so much easier and quicker. Yeah. So it is good in that sense. And also like when you're sparring too, it helps you put things together better. Um, but I mean, I don't think they have any of those gyms around here. Uh, not really. I think there's one in Toronto. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to go to that chain of gyms anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cause what are the like? What are the big two? There's Lions, and then there's like I think Diaz. I'd say those are yeah. probably Diaz. Yeah. yeah, they're probably the two bigger ones here in Vancouver. Um, I come check out Lions, man. As soon as they're back mm -hmm. open, we'll get a workout in together. Yeah, no, for well, sure. It's actually my intention because I just live. I live on Thurlow and like Burnaby, so literally like the back mm -hmm. alley goes straight. It turns in the drain. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's yeah, so it's like it's like right there. So I was I was actually gonna sign up for and start doing the um, six a.m. class. Yeah, yeah, I'll come down to meet you, man. Yeah, yeah I'll come yeah. down to meet you at 6 a.m. for sure. Yeah. Joe loves training early in the morning. Yeah, I, I get up at 5 every day. Right? Dave, you, you gotta go. get in on this. Yeah, you guys are just whipping me. <laughs> Joe's been <laughs> trying to get me <laughs> doing it for like a year. <laughs> It'll be good because the next month or two, they're just going to be doing solo work. So they've got the bags at the back. They'll mm -hmm. have like a pad set up, which will be up against the pole and then shadow boxing in the front. So you'll just rotate through. So. Mm -hmm there'll be probably like four or five teachers going at that time. So you'll get a lot more feedback on your technique rather than just being with a partner and then walking past and giving you maybe like one or two tips throughout the whole workout. They'll be there all the time. It actually probably be That's a really smart. good place to learn. Yeah, it will. You'll, yeah, you'll, it's all, it's, you're basically on your own. So you don't yeah. have to have someone else, you know, not holding pads right for you or something like that. <laughs> the last week, um, me and my training partner, who I've been training with for on and off for two years now, we've been training here at home. We basically just tie it, whatever we can do in this space. So we'll tie our legs together and just do pocket fighting for like an hour. <laughs> but it's, it'll be nice to actually have the gym to train in, like to move around, to like go to and be not at home. Sorry, this downtown. Yeah, 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 I think I hear it too, actually. Because you, like, are you in the West End? 
<laughs> yeah, we're in no, Homa. We're we're in Yelltown. Oh, okay. I, I, yeah. I swear I heard that too. I don't know, I'm crazy, but I'm like I'm right on Thurlow, so I hear like set of Everything. sirens every like. We're Homer <laughs> and um, what is this street? Nelson? Nelson. Yeah. Nelson. Nelson. Homer Nelson. Yeah. Yeah. Abe, you're the lucky one. You're in kits. Nothing goes on in kits. Right? It's peaceful. Yeah. <laughs> when, when, when there is a siren, I'm like, what the hell? You know what, actually? Since this quarantine has happened, there's been so many more, like, people cracked out on drugs, just wandering around this area. Like, there, yeah. we, we went to Nesta's one morning, we walked around the corner, and there was some, there was police tape and everything, and someone had died. Like, they had a someone covered with a sheet and everything. Yeah. Like, just in yes. the middle of the... It's, in the just, of the it's fucked. It's just, yeah. And I'm like, this is Yelltown. What the hell is they going shut on? Down, they shut down a few of the parks on Hastings now, and everyone's just migrated into the city. Yeah. 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 yeah I was like, I was, I was telling you, this has been a subject to me. I've been telling Dave, and one time, like, him and I are on a call, and like, I'm walking down English Bay, and you know, where like the bathrooms are, and then they turn it into like a makeshift shelter where literally they sell pills and like smoke crack out of it. Yeah. And oh then, like, God. I got my headphones, and this guy's like yelling at me. <laughs> And I'm just like, okay. And then I, I guess like I could hear him over and he was like yelling like nice dog. But then number one, I'm not going to acknowledge you even though it's a compliment. I'm like on a phone call. And then like, and then he starts calling me a dickhead. And then he just like <laughs> tries to attack me. And I'm like, you know, what's going on? I'm like, I don't know. Like that was the thing. It's like, yeah, we're all like sheltered at home, but it's just like, it has facilitated you know, that, right? Yeah. yeah, and like all the windows and stuff were getting broken in all the stores. That's be because there was less people around. So there was people just like, looting yeah and then they all the stores had to put those big boards and everything and it's crazy there was a point there like at the start of april where i thought the world was gonna end <laughs> <laughs> yeah right yeah it was crazy i think that's my that was my biggest concern with like this whole corona and stuff and i really wasn't too concerned about like you know catching it with someone like a client someone interacted was that like there's just you know the the, the downtrodden are just all over the place and i may touch something that they just touched and they're probably just yeah. Little yeah. prone to having it because you know their immune system and that sort of stuff i think that was my biggest concern personally was just going out and you know especially being on thurlow at thurlow and davies so those who are listening yeah. uh, i live downtown and it's right by the major downtown hospital where again if you google vancouver there's like a drug homeless problem and you know, when they're sick or whatever, they go there and then they just walk around my place and stuff. I yeah, know my biggest, that was my, mm. yeah. And just like, you know, I've seen people just shooting heroin. This, 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 this podcast just turned that way, but yeah, they're just yeah. like shooting heroin, like right outside. I'm trying to walk my dog. And then like, you know, yeah. he's grabbing like a needle on my like, cave. Like, yeah. Seriously, you know, yeah. Like, One of our friends lives, like he says on the cusp of danger because it's like, <laughs> that was awesome. The cusp, sorry, the cusp of danger. I just that. <laughs> Cusp you walk here. out of his apartment and if you go right it's guest town but if you go left it's pacing like straight up right in the middle of it it's where they have all those little markets at the start of yeah Hastings. it's like right where it's td and like body energy club right at the end of guest town but literally if you go left it's it's like just you know drug addicts everywhere but he said in the beginning of the quarantine the police were coming down every day and clearing them out like telling them they had to go they had to go so that's why they're like you know venturing out to everywhere else in the city because they were getting cleared out right. every day <laughs> so yeah i think that was the one thing too is like i mean the city like i mean we haven't had that many cases but i think that i think that this one observation i made i'm not saying this is fact it's opinion observation of like there's just some like a lack of follow-through just like hey go go you know if it was a nightclub yeah. and they kick them out they're not making sure they get in a cab and go home they're like hey you just go here i don't care where you go but where they go is like some other place right it was kind of like with like the parks and they they blocked the roads but like they did all that stuff and then there wasn't really anyone enforcing anything yeah. afterwards. I guess maybe from what I saw, so I could be wrong. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. Oh, well, it looks like we're getting towards the end of it all now. There's yeah. some light at the end of the tunnel. Nice. Right? right yeah. There? yeah, fingers yeah. crossed, yeah. You know? Yeah, and it's getting warmer, right? And they said that the, well, that apparently the virus is, it's not as, uh, like it doesn't last as long on surfaces and stuff like that um, in warmer weather, so. Who knows, but. Hopefully that's true. <laughs> hopefully that's going hopefully into it's summer. True. Hopefully I just don't even true. know anymore because it just changes. So yeah, much. there's just been so much bad information circulating around, and the media's just done a horrible job. Yeah, at, at doing the, what they're supposed to do. Yeah, and that, that's their that's their mission objective, right? Like that. We yeah. I, actually, and I, it was our podcast podcast six. We had Deidre uh, Sarani, who was Dave's uh, business coach. So anyone who hasn't listened to that, tune into that, and and she talks about that because she that was her that's what she's educated in. She had a degree yeah. in, in, uh, in news, in, yeah, in, in news, and um, yeah, she touched upon that. That's like the, you know, they just spin, they just spin the wheel, right? 
Yeah, they, they know what's catchy for you. They know what you'll pay attention to and what you won't. So <laughs> they destroyed yeah. the economy. They're the ones that can manipulate the markets and do whatever they want just with like one or two articles or like a thirty second clip can just change mm. so many hundreds of thousands of lives. And they don't yeah. Realize. Oh yeah. Too much no, power. for sure. It's, I think it's like the game of telephone. And yeah. Sweden and the Netherlands were like one of the only countries that didn't do a full lockdown. Yeah, they had herd immunity. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and yeah. Yeah. they said their healthcare system can handle it. So yeah. they just let people just continue about their lives. So they had some pretty big numbers for sicknesses, but their financial side of the, the country stayed. Like, they, there's nowhere near as impacted as here in America. In well, see, and, yeah, and that's the thing, though, too, right? It's like, yeah, you want, we want to do this stuff, but then, you know, on the flip side of it, it's yet to be seen, you know, the damage, the death, and, like, you know, some of the crisis that'll come on the other side of that with, like, business shutting mm -hmm. down and people's mental health yeah. and, like, people killing themselves or yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, that, that's pretty much affected everybody. So, you know... Right. Well, we'll see in a couple of years all the stats. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. We'll probably look back at this and think, wow, we were such idiots. It's funny. We, <laughs> we like, overreacted we, way too much. We're telling our kids about this. Like, I never thought we would live through something like this in our lifetime. No. Oh. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all those crazy. people with, like, bomb shelters and stuff that live in the woods, yeah. in the backwards. Yeah. It's like, see, I told you so. I was yeah. waiting for it. Here it is. You know, and they're just <laughs> probably just giving themselves a fucking pat on the back. Yeah. And what about Tiger King? He like became as famous as he hoped because everybody was at home. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, or, or what's the other one? The Too Hot to Handle. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 The, one, the one girl, yeah, Francesca's from here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she's from yeah. here. She, she literally really gained like... We guess she was from here before we even knew. We're like, she's from <laughs> she's Vancouver. Like, fucking, she's got that, like, the, this. The yeah. 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 Just like you just knew she yeah. like, worked in Yale Town or something, right? It's just like... Yeah. 100%. You know, just the, just the, the stamp, the Yale Town stamp. But yeah, she went from like, you know, good for her having, I think it was like three or 400,000 followers. So I mm. just checked this morning. It's millions, yeah. Yeah, and 4.4. 4. 4. Yeah. Wow, that's insane. Yeah. So she, yeah. she set herself up now. I actually didn't like her when we were watching the show. I was like, oh, she's so annoying. But then afterwards, I was like, actually, she's smart. She got in everybody's business and constantly was like, one of the main characters the center of attention so that then it benefited her at the end you know like it was oh, yeah. all, i feel like it was a strategy for sure mm. oh for sure I you got so. one shot you got one shot you know what yeah. i mean like you know yeah but that girl from the well, uk she did a really bad job like she, does anyone even remember her name, her name? yeah yeah, yeah, I don't yeah her just her like or the Irish girl. I forget. I'm like, oh the yeah, Irish this chick's yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, Irish, yeah, like yeah. Who, who's the? Oh yeah, right. She's one of the contestants. I forgot. Mm. You know. Yeah, mm. exactly. <laughs> yeah, she did. She, what's the name again? The, the one know. from here. The one from here. Oh, mm. I don't remember. Yeah, she did a good job branding herself. She's got a she's got herself a brand now that she can leverage and make money off probably the rest of her life. Oh yeah, she's that's good. true. <laughs> yeah, she's done a good job. The whole TV series itself is pretty funny and stupid. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. It's just like there's so much shit, and that, that's the other part too. There's just so like the two, from what I observe, it's like the two two shows that like just went through the roof are just drivel. It's just like yeah, like, crazy. I, I think we almost <laughs> need that because there's just so much shit going on. Like I turn on the news, or I don't even try and turn on the news. I forgot I signed up for like computer alerts, and every time I turn something on, it's just like this this bouncing ball of just stories and i just don't yeah. even care anymore it's yeah. just like mm. i think it's, it's like it depends on that's how i'm handling i'm just cho choosing to ignore it Me um too. where like i know dave's actually doing like a, a, a summit in four weeks on um, mental health we we're talking about how to manage mental health and i think that's the other side of the news where like you know, just you, you take it the other way and just go crazy so it's just nice yeah. to have that drivel you know just yeah to, yeah well, it's stuff. like light it's something light and funny that you can watch that's yeah. like you know I, I this whole time joe's been like what do you want to watch on netflix i'm like nothing scary nothing that's going to make me cry can't handle it right now yeah, like when oh, it yeah. first came out, when this first happened, everyone, like, oh, you should watch Contagion. I'm like, I'm fucking living in it right now. I don't need to watch it. Like, you know, I'm like, yeah. yeah. Like, well, that's why also TikTok came up and took off so fast in our generation okay, because it wasn't even for our generation. And it took yeah. off because it's just so mindless and funny. <laughs> yeah, I had it and I deleted it. <laughs> I deleted that shit so fast. <laughs> I enjoyed it for a couple of weeks. I'm like, what am I doing? Like, this is stupid. <laughs> sure. I was spending about an hour a day, maybe an hour and a half, just sitting there like scrolling. Yeah. <laughs> Not anymore. It'll be, yeah. Or like, It'll I, be interesting to see everybody's new normals after this, like what it actually goes back to. I just, I've, I've, um, 
don't like that expression new normal i just i just want the old normal sorry you're gonna say i was gonna say it's uh it got a bit out of control with the social media and digital content consumption and then we started implementing a, a sunday like tech free day which has worked really well for us so on sunday we just don't pick up our phones at all airplane mode like at least from you know a.m to p.m um and it's made it's made us one take a lot more time to be with each other mm. and two to get outside like if you can't play on your phone you don't really you know try not to watch tv there's a lot yeah. more stuff to do outside yeah no it's, it's funny like when i saw this I, I, uh dave knows and other podcasts i talk about like one of the most entertaining things for me is just reading people's just comments and like keyboard <laughs> critics uh, online and then like <laughs> just this one funny comment i ran into online where like the gym's but gyms reopening one guy's just like oh great another place where people can just play on their phone you know which is just like, <laughs> never gonna happen but it's so true and i talked about this in one of our other podcasts where like i know for us on our side of things i don't know how it went for you but like you know for me also working for turn fit and then do my own thing is like you know now my worlds are colliding where mm. I'm, I'm like a, a new client acquisitions having online and then you know doing courses and then managing part components of the business but now i'm training people online and then you know some of the some of the devices were also used for like reading news and that sort of stuff and now everything is just like just in one thing where i just like i'm like fuck so I, you know it was actually nice i do the same thing i try to like turn off um you know, on a Sunday or something, we're like, I actually started reading the newspaper. You know, there's like a stack of newspapers right there. Ah, so, like, good. you know, for that, I just thought like, that's a little more controlled for me. And I can just scroll mm. through where it's just like everything online is just coming at you. So I know that's You're one thing that's on I, the screen. Sorry? Yeah. You're always on a screen. Yeah, just always on a screen. It's just like, I just feel like just sick some days, honestly. So yeah. I don't know what yeah. you mean. Like, are you going through some of that too? I forget. Yeah, for sure. About. I took, I, I do uh, do not disturb mode for sure, at least on Sundays. I try to do the whole weekend. The whole weekend's hard because yeah. I actually do like working. But <laughs> um, I, I, found, I found it's actually really good to, with the do not disturb. So like I just set it um, during weekdays, actually more strict now. So like um, after five, it doesn't show me anything. And then on Good. weekends, I try to make just That's why you never answer. Disturb at all. Ever. <laughs> yeah, I don't even see it. I don't even see it afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's really important. Yeah, and you're, they, like, you're, you're more productive in uh, like set blocks of time instead of working you know, from like 6 a.m. till 10 p.m. anyway. Yeah, you should see my calendar. It's like every hour that I'm up, even before that I'm up, it's like everything's planned. And then like, it's like a kind of fun video game because it's like my heart rate's like going I'm like okay how many ten minutes left for this project and then the next one comes and then I'm like going 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 and then it's like afterwards it's like just done so it feels like a video game the whole time I'm up. So, yeah, yeah, it was exactly the same. I don't plan it like that so much. I'll just be like, okay, today I need I want to get this and this done, and then I'll just work on it. But he's the same. I have my whole life yeah. from like the time I wake up to the time I go to sleep in my calendar. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like it. Even my free time, my workouts, my everything's in the calendar, so I know what I'm doing. It's yeah. fun to plan. He sends yeah, me get... invitations when we're going to work out together. <laughs> <laughs> I have That's awesome. invite. <laughs> yeah. It's good to remind I... people sometimes, right? And then there's no excuse. Oh, I forgot. I'm like, you had an email. You know? <laughs> I forget a lot, so. Yeah. That's one of the reasons yeah. why I use it so ridiculously. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, ha but I have to, I have to skedaddle you two. Yeah, I'm no a training client. Isn't that right fun? Away. But yeah, uh, Dave, do you want to, can you do this, the send off? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So and you too. And then I'll, I'll bring you up for the, uh, uh, yeah. what's it called? Let's organize the yeah. 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 For sure. Okay. All right. I got a okay. dip. All right. Okay. Train that client. All right. Yeah. So okay. everybody listening still make sure to subscribe. Um, the links down below. Um, you can check us out at turnfit.ca, our website, or go check out Movement Foods, movementfoods.ca. Is that correct? Uh, movementfood.com. Yeah. So .com, M -M I'm sorry. M-E-N-T-F-W-O-D.com. <laughs> and then you have no an way. Instagram account? Yeah, movement underscore food. All right. So check them out. Uh, they are an amazing company, like Rob was saying. Um, I think we connected. Did we, did we connect at the same time that you connected with Rob then? Because as soon as you um, were here, I found you guys. I feel like you were a customer like at the very beginning of the business and then we just became really good friends straight away. We used to train at the gym that Rob worked at and yeah. that was the very first gym that we trained yeah. at. So we probably met you guys around the same time. Oh yeah, probably I guess similar. so. Yeah. yeah. The world it's a small it's a small, small world. So yeah. good people yeah. usually stick together, so it's really cool how yeah. life shifted, but we all kind of keep staying together. And you guys um, are from the same part of Canada, did you say? 
Yeah, so we're both, we both grew up in Winnipeg. Um, he lived there a little bit longer than I did, uh, and then he re relocated. So, and both our stories are actually similar. Both of us grew up overweight and had different other issues um, with depression wow. and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. it's really cool how things kind of work out. Um, yeah. If you guys are mm -hmm. interested, or anybody that's listening, um, also, because Rob mentioned it about the uh, mental health part, in about a month's time, um, we are having a virtual summit on mental health. So anybody that you know, any experts, or any tips that you do, um, ponder in the back of your head, send me an email, reach out to me. It could be even you guys. Um, we're looking mm -hmm. for at least 16 different experts to talk on the topic of mental health and stay uh, optimal and healthy at all times. Yeah, cool. cool. I'd it. be happy to give you some of my tips that I use to manage anxiety and stress. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot I of think them. they'd be super valuable because it shows yeah. that um, you, you, whether you have it or not, like most people have something um mental health wise that might p potentially hinder them but they take the other side optimistic mm -hmm. side and put piece it all together and look at mm -hmm. you guys like running a crazy successful business or same thing with mm -hmm. us as well like you would never tell mm -hmm. that rob and i had shit wrong with us yeah, <laughs> yeah right i miss we both have like an interesting ah families in, for another time no, i'm not Let's gonna, not say, I'm not gonna say it but i'm just saying like we have similar you know like yeah. we didn't come from yeah. like a or perfect upbringing or whatever <laughs> yeah exactly yeah all right so, so we'll sign right, it cool. off and uh we'll chat with you guys another time and thank you everybody for tuning in thanks okay, for having thanks, us Dave. see you guys all right, Bye.